Uh, rule number three, which talks about the general definitions, uh, provides definitions to terms that reappear throughout the rules of the road. Uh, less frequently used terms are also defined where they appear. For example, in rules 12b, 13b, 14b, 21 and 32. I'll talk more about that as we go along today. So uh, the first uh, part or A part A of this rule uh, talks about the word vessel uh, and all vehicles that operate on the water are actually vessels including displacement craft. Uh, those are those that float or are supported by the static buoyancy derived from the water that their hulls displace or non-displacement craft. Uh, those are uh, the vessels that are supported by the dynamic lift of hydrofoils or other lifting surfaces as well as seaplanes. And the phrase used or capable of being used as a means of transportation implies the practical transportation of people or cargo. Uh, inner tubes are not included, although sailboards are. Uh, in part B, you can see has uh, focused on the power driven vessel. Now vessels propelled by oars, paddles or other human or animal powered means are not included in this definition, nor are they covered in the steering rules anywhere, uh, at least from rules 4 to 19. Uh, if you are in a rowboat, canoe, kayak or similar, you must, rule number, you must use rule number 2. So in other words, you basically have to use common sense and good judgment. Now vessels propelled by machinery as well as any other means of propulsion are considered to be power driven vessels. A day ship is required for most of these vessels using both sails and machinery for propulsion. Part C of the rule focuses on sailing vessels of course. Now vessels using only their sails for propulsion are included in this definition even though they may be fitted with an engine. Now operation of the engine to generate electricity or to heat water for example does not make the sailing vessel a power driven vessel so long as the propeller is not engaged. Now if you think about it rule number 18 tells us what the responsibilities of sailing vessels are with respect to other type of vessels and rule number 12 does the same with respect to other sailing vessels. So rule number 12 focuses mainly on sailing vessels uh, if you go back and see the rule. If I talk, talk about part D of rule number three, as a general rule, this definition includes most commercial fishing vessels uh, while fishing and excludes most recreational or sport fishing vessels. The term lines in the phrase fishing vessel, fishing with nets, lines and trawls, they refer to lines such as long lines, which may be miles long and to which are attached at regular intervals, many leaders and hooks. Uh, the term trawls refers to large open mouth nets that are towed through the water by one or two specifically equipped fishing vessels or trawlers. Uh, not included in this definition are vessels fishing with trolling lines. For example, a sport fisherman's rod and reel with a line towed astern, which do not restrict the maneuverability of the vessel. The use of nets, lines or trawls is presumed to restrict maneuverability while the use of trolling lines is presumed not to do so. The master determines whether the fishing apparatus restricts maneuverability or not. If a collision occurs, the court may subsequently make the determination as well. In any case, a master electing to take on vessel engaged in fishing status is required to display the day shapes and lights prescribed by rule number 26. Rule number 18 assigns the privileges and obligations of vessels engaged in fishing with respect to other classes of vessels. So if you go back to rule number 18, you will see that not only for sailing vessel, but for fishing vessel also, the obligations and the privileges are very clear. Part E of this rule, which talks about the word seaplane. Now, when on the water, a seaplane is actually a vessel. And uh, rule number 31 gives the navigation lights and shapes required for seaplanes. Uh, you are normally not asked uh, these uh, questions about seaplanes in your oral examination. But if you are asked, then th that is where you will find it. Uh, then we come to part F of rule number 3, which talks about the vessel not under command. Now, a vessel claiming to be not under command status must firstly find itself in exceptional circumstances and secondly thereby be unable to maneuver as would be ordinarily required by the rules. Now the following are the examples of conditions that could result in not under command status. So what are the kind of vessels that will be not under command? Well think about it where vessels with anchor down but not holding is not under command, vessel riding on anchor chains, vessel with inoperative steering gear or sailing vessels uh, be calmed or in irons. 
uh, in exceptionally bad weather relative to vessel claiming status so these are the kind of vessels that may be not under command vessels claiming not under command status are considered to be underway that is they are not considered to be at anchor made fast to the shore or a ground rule number 18 assigns the privileges and obligations of not under command vessels with respect to other vessel or other classes of vessels uh, rule number 27 prescribes the lights and shapes to be displayed by not under command vessels part g of rule number 3 well if you see that uh, the uh, a vessel restricted in ability to maneuver firstly must be unable to keep out of the way of the other vessels uh, secondly because of the nature of its work that is what the focus of this rule is or the part of this rule is so the status does not apply to vessels that cannot maneuver because they are in a narrow channel or in a shallow water or because of strong currents or bad weather now if you think about it the this definition actually lists a number of vessel activities that entitle the vessel to restricted in ability to maneuver status here the examples are given itself now note that vessel types are not named but vessels engaged in certain activities are listed the distinction being a cable laying vessel is not necessarily entitled to the status as a vessel restricted in ability to maneuver but a vessel engaged in cable laying is all right so cable laying vessel on its own if it not engaged in the operation is not uh restricted in ability to maneuver but when the cable vessel laying when the cable laying vessel is actually uh, performing the operations of actually laying the cable then it becomes a vessel restricted in ability to maneuver all right so otherwise it is just a normal power driven vessel uh, now if you see a towing vessel with tow is under some circumstances less able to maneuver than a power driven vessel alone however the master of a vessel engaged in a routine towing operation is not normally justified in claiming restricted in ability to maneuver status this is emph emphasized in the definition by the words severely restricts if you can see the words there the master must make the determination and the towing vessel and the tow are considered as a unit restricted in their ability to deviate from their course vessels restricted in ability to maneuver may or may not be underway now I come to part h of rule number 3 Uh, this term covers uh, such cases as a large vessel passing between islands or a vessel in a channel whose draft exceeds the water depth outside the channel the depth of water indirectly underneath the vessel is not the determining factor here rather the depth or lack of it close to either side of the vessel determines the level of constraint uh, rule number 18 part d prescribes the action to be taken by vessels constrained by draft and other vessels in the vicinity Uh, rule number 28 gives the lights and shapes for vessels constrained by draft uh, then i move on to part i of rule number 3 where you are focused on the word underway the underway should be distinguished from the phrases making way through the water and making no way through the water uh, now making way through the water is used in rules number 26 27 35 and making no way through the water is used in rule number 35 a vessel that is underway Uh, need not be moving through the water but may simply be not anchored at ground or made fast to the shore this is the definition if a vessel is making no way through the water it is stopped and drifting unless it is not underway if it is moving relative to the water it is making way for example if a ship is headed up a river making 5 knots through the water then there is a 5 knot current against it then it is making way through the water even though it is making no progress relative to the shore however another ship drifting down the river is not making way even though it is moving much faster over the bottom it is fairly common for river tow boats pushing ahead to hold their position by putting the head of their tow against the bank and applying some forward thrust to prevent any kind of movement in this situation the tow is free to maneuver and not considered to be aground therefore it is considered to be underway uh, then we come to part j of rule number 3 where length overall can be visualized by bringing the bow excluding the bow spirits uh, bow spirits and so forth of the vessel's hull up against a vertical wall and then bringing another vertical wall up against the stern length overall will then be the distance between the two walls other lengths commonly referred to not in these rules but otherwise they refer to include water line length which is basically measured between points where stem and stern enter the water and length between perpendiculars measured from the point the stem intersects the design water line and the center line of the rudder post in the aft part the greatest breadth does not always occur amidships this is something you must make a note of 
part K of the rules now, rules number 11 through 18 apply only to vessels in sight of one another. These rules assign responsibilities as give way or stand on vessels for various situations. These eight rules do not apply to two vessels not in sight of one another. Even though the vessels may know each other's exact course, speed and position by means of automated radar plotting aids or other devices, rule number 11 all the way to rule number 18 apply only if visual contact is also made. Uh, then I come to rule number 3 part L which focuses on the restricted visibility. Now remember rules number 19 and 35 uh, apply to vessels in or near an area of uh, restricted visibility. Restricted visibility may be due to any of the listed natural causes or to other factors such as smoke or smog. Uh, and uh, visibility need not be restricted all around the vessel nor does the vessel in question have to be in fog, mist or whatever. Uh, for example, a vessel must follow the rules for restricted visibility if it is close to a fog bank, even though it may be in clear air and have clear air on three sides. The vessel in this example would however follow the rules for vessels in sight of one another with respect to vessels also in clear air that it can see. So if you can see the vessels, then rule number 11 to 18 apply. Otherwise, if you can't see the vessel, then of course rule number 19 restricted visibility apply. Uh, if you go to rule number 20 part C, you will see that it requires the display of navigation lights during periods of restricted visibility. As the guideline lights should, if carried, be turned on whenever the visibility drops the minimum visibility distance specified for your masthead light by rule number 22. That is 6 miles for the largest vessels down to 2 miles for the smallest. Uh, rule number 35 requires the use of sound signals in or near an area of restricted visibility. As a guideline, signals should be given when visibility in any direction falls below the minimum audibility range specified for the whistle on your vessel by Annex 3 of the rules of the road. That is 2 miles for the largest vessels down to 1.5 mile for the smallest. Alright, so I think this is pretty much it that covers uh, rule number 3. As you know that uh, sometime later on, and it has been few years now, they added part M which uh, talks about the term wing in ground craft which basically refers to a multi multimodal craft, uh, which uh, in its main operational mode flies in close proximity to the surface by utilizing the surface effect action. Now, this is something that uh, normally not much people are asking, but the definition is pretty straightforward and it explains a particular style of craft or type of craft, which is the wing in ground craft. Uh, otherwise, try and understand the other rules and uh, basically the other definitions. Remember the other definitions because uh, nobody will ask you the parts of the rule directly, but you may have to apply this definition in um, on the question. So if you are given a, a question where you are in doubt whether restricted visibility occurs or not, you must fall back to this definition here. Use the definitions that are provided in rule number three and uh, it will help you to achieve clarity regarding some of these terms when they are used later on in rules from starting from rule number four all the way to rule number 19.